<laughs> All right, Sarah Hilton, take two. For the audience that likely will never see the first, <laughs> the first go at it, we had about a minute or two of uh, hearing, trying to hear about your your story. Um, and what I was saying is, I'm just going to turn it over to you for a quick intro. I know you and I have been, for the audience, Sarah and I have been connected digitally for a month or two now and, and really like what each other's doing. So we thought it made sense to get on here, chat a little bit about what Sarah is doing specifically, because I had joined her uh, podcast a few weeks back and talked a little bit about what we were doing at Junk Raider. So returning the favor a little bit. But Sarah, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about your background and what you do? Right. All right. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> forgot to say that on the first one. Um, uh, so I, my background is in marketing. I've been doing that for pretty much ever since I was 20, back in the MySpace days and kind of grew the social media audience for a nonprofit. And then um, back in 2018, there was really no more room for me to grow there. And I decided to get my real estate license here in North Carolina. So I did that um, pretty exclusively. But what I found through that is while I loved being around the people, I love the rush of the people aspect of real estate. I hated the sales side. Um, and so I decided to kind of use my marketing knowledge and know-how to start my own marketing company. And so now most of my clients are real estate agents or in the real estate industry. And I help them with um, both on the social media management side, but also um, give them tips and tricks and courses and coaching and all that to grow um, their business using social media primarily. Awesome. awesome. Well, we appreciate that quick intro. So for clarity, are you, are you still a realtor? Like, do you also sell properties yourself? Yes. Yeah, so I still hold my license. Um, I probably, I sold a few houses this year, but this has really kind of taken over. It's sure. gotten a lot more busy in the past few months. And so yeah. I, I prefer it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I, I always like, uh, you know, I'm a sales guy. So I, and besides just running a business, I have a sales gene in me. So I'm always curious wherever I go or whoever I talk to, like, how do you, how do you get your business? So on the marketing side with realtors specifically, how do you acquire those customers? I mean, I'm, I'm sure that, that that's something I honestly wouldn't even know how to approach because it's such a unique kind of kind of a kind of a thing that realtors I feel like probably get bombarded with a lot of marketing folks coming at them from left and right just based on right. it's probably the one industry that I can put my finger you know, point my finger at and be like that is very much so an industry where if you don't exist online you're probably doing yourself a, a massive disservice and so there's marketing opportunities available to them from everywhere how do you acquire your customers what's kind of been the main avenue Yes, yeah, so you're right. Um, everyone loves to sell to a realtor, right? Yeah. It's they definitely get marketed at all the time. Um, what I found, like when I got into real estate, was that there is, in general, and and it's changed over the past couple of years. There's kind of an old, um, old school tie to real estate, right? They still focus very much on in person calling and all that and all that works. Mm -hmm. um, but I really noticed there was kind of like this area of opportunity that a lot of real estate agents were not tapping into. And specifically that was getting on video. Um, so I kind of started off, I, I do management for people on their regular posts and all that stuff. But the way I got them was really getting on video and teaching them how to get on video, right? right? How to use video to build trust with their clients to which or with their audience, I should say, and to turn them into clients. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and you and I discussed this when you were on my show, but a lot of times when you are using video, people are seeing your, people are seeing your eyes, they're hearing the way you sound there, you know, there's, there's a level of relationship that they can build only on video. And if you are not doing that as a real estate agent, the next guy is going to come and eat your lunch. Yeah. Um, so I, my main thing was I had a Facebook group um, teaching kind of marketing tips to agents. And then over the last like probably six to eight months, I've been going hard on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And Instagram has been great for me, um, really, as of late. I, lately, I've been getting the most of my clients through there and then through in-person workshops locally here in Charlotte. Got it. It's interesting. And what I can say is, um, you know, I started my, you can call it digital journey, yeah. eight, probably eight years ago when I first got into my tech sales job. And at the time I had a very, uh, I had the director of marketing that oversaw our sales team. It's kind of nuanced. You don't see that often, but anyways, he, he did. 
he's now my business partner in Junk Raider. Um, but he and I saw eye to eye on a lot of stuff. And his whole mantra was kind of what you now see today with a lot of mainstream marketing efforts, moving away from print, billboards, old school commercials, and get into this thing called social media and other avenues. Um, and so I first got introduced to this whole world of social media of brand building, basically, not just, oh, get on Facebook because it's cool and you want to know what Sally Sue's doing Friday night at you know 8 p.m., <laughs> but use it for your business, right? And so I, I kind of got into that. And obviously, the main players in that space at the time and still are today, like Gary V and many others at the time. But I just, I, I remember, and he still talks about it today, not that I'm a huge Gary V fan or like, you know, for anybody that hates him, I totally get why you do and I totally get why I you mean, might I like him. He's, he's smart. He can be a little much, but. Yeah, I, I, I'm yeah. with you there. Mm -hmm. um, but he talks a lot about like, you don't have to be on video if you don't like being on video, but you have to exist in this digital world in some way. So you can, you know, uh, maybe, and maybe you could touch on some of these tactics. Like I wouldn't, for my, for me, like I don't feel super comfortable like holding a phone and videoing. I've gotten better at it because I've realized that it's more of a necessity for my business that I do this and just start to document at the very least. Like it doesn't have to be a grand production, but let me at least document my thoughts and get people that might want to consume our services, might want to buy into our franchise brand, seeing my face to, to your point and hearing my voice on their own terms. And so um, I think there's, you know, when, when people hear about social media, get more active on social media, build your brand. I feel like innately, and it was true for me eight years ago, like, oh man, I don't want to get on video. You know, I'm scared to do that. That's that's not my personality. It seems narcissistic or whatever the case may be, but maybe you could touch on kind of the other avenues available to folks outside of, of them themselves being on the video that they could implement in their, in their you know, day-to-day -day lives or their business that they're running. Right. So that's a tough one. I would say you're right. You don't have to be on video. Yeah. But I will say that I'm a strong believer that video is probably the, the most powerful type of marketing, right? Because yeah. you can build, uh, you know, I, I always use this um, analogy, but it's like when you're when you're dating, when you're starting to date, let's say if you meet someone online, right? You're, you're texting maybe or you're messaging through the app, let's say, and then it comes off the app and then you're texting and then maybe you're going to set up a time to see the person. All that is great. And you're building some level of a relationship through that. Mm -hmm. But if it never gets offline or if you never get to the point where you and I think now the apps have like FaceTime. I don't know. I haven't dated in a long time, but <laughs> now now I think you can FaceTime through these apps. Right. So yes. if it never moves to that level where you have some sort of face to face with a person, it's really hard to build a certain level of trust or you are going to build trust faster with the person who you do see their face, hear their voice and everything. Yeah. So that's one part of it, specifically with real estate, right? Because that's a very um, relational sort of business, right? Mm -hmm. And so if there's me and there's... Um, Joe Schmo over here, if both of us are really great at what we do, know, know our market, know this, but I'm the one that's on video, chances are I'm going to capture that audience before Joe does yeah. because you have built the relationship with me. So, you know, it depends what industry you're in, of course. Um, but I do think that specifically in real estate and those relational type businesses, I know most people don't want to be on video. Yeah. And of course, you don't have to be on video, but I do think that you um, your business will grow much faster if you do get on video. And show yes. So that's number one. Number two, though, is that, yes, there are ways around that and ways to bring people into your story of your business without necessarily showing your face. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't feel comfortable at first, a lot of things that you can do um, that work really well is on video. Specifically, you can document your day, you know, what are you seeing? Everything, the behind the scenes of everyone else's life is way more interesting than our own. Yeah. Um, and I consume like a lot of TikTok and it's crazy yeah. the things that we watch people do, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, just a behind the scenes of people, of you walking, like for your example, let's say if you're walking with your team to a house that they're about to clean out and you're documenting that process, right? That's interesting to people showing the before and after that there's a very, you have small kids, right? 
I do. If you can hear them in the background, they're yelling their yes. heads off. Well, you'll hear my attention. So, okay, this is such a crazy analogy, but anyone with small kids will understand. On YouTube, there's this oddly satisfying genre of videos where it's like tires running over stuff till it smashes and explodes. And it's like gummy bears, soda cans, right? All this stuff is like oddly satisfying and it's it's a marketing psychology thing and I won't get into it. Important. But the, a lot of those principles, look what does really well on YouTube, even though it's random, a lot of those principles apply like in your marketing. So it is oddly satisfying to see this really cluttered up, let's say garage or room for your example, garage or room. And then you're showing the before and after, and maybe you're doing a little time-lapse um, time lapse video. Yeah. And then at the end, that room is cleared, mm. right? There's also marketing psychology that shows that people, you are you are much more likely to get a really long watch time because there's something about watching something from beginning to end that makes people keep watching, right? So mm. all of those things can be applied to any business that you're in. You know, what? even if you're not the boots, I know you're not, usually the one clearing out the houses, right? right? But if you can get out there a couple of times a month, position a tripod and just capture a time-lapse video yeah. of that house, that's great. Carpet cleaners, listen, I've seen carpet cleaner videos where they're showing how they like clean this rug from beginning to end, what it looked like. And at the end, you're like, oh my God, yeah. the lawn, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's something in every business that um, that you can get on video and that you can use and that even though you are doing it every day, I'm sure you don't get excited about seeing a room go from from dirty to cleared out anymore, right? But yep. you're doing it every day. Um, mm -hmm. So people love really to be up. Anything that takes your viewer along for like the ride or your story um, is is really good, I think, for your marketing. It's a great way to build a relationship. You're, it, this is the same feeling I had when I started watching Gary V eight years ago, because you don't, you don't think of stuff this way just as a normal human. And, yeah. but like now that I've consumed his content for eight years, when he says document, don't create, it just makes sense to me. And everything that you just said makes sense to me. And now, and you've got my wheels turning. Like if you think about any of like the TV shows that used to, used to, and probably still do grab that we gravitate towards. I, one that comes to mind is hard knocks. I don't know if you ever watched that show. It's on HBO. Um, it comes out like maybe once a year. They follow an NFL team around. They give you like the behind oh, right. the scenes. But right. we're only interested in that. It could be the worst team in the NFL. But yeah. it's super interesting because none of us live that life. So we're getting a glimpse into, oh, these guys actually open this door when they go into the, the stadium for their just normal day-to-day -day practice. This is what a meeting with the coach looks like when they're about to get, you know, um, released from the team, like that raw footage. Yeah. It's so interesting. Reality TV, like anything that we used to watch on MTV, um, even, even shows that aren't reality TV that are sitcoms. I mean, think of yeah. Friends and, and Home Improvement. All these shows are because we as people are, to your point, interested in what others are doing, even if it's made up. So I totally, man, right. I, I totally get with that. Um yeah, it's a very, you know, we live where humans are voyeurs by nature. We like to kind of be in the mix. And if you think about, I mean, so I personally can't get into it, but my sister can like watch the Kardashians a lot. And they just, you know, they're just like, oh my God, no, you did it. Oh my God. But yeah. it's something about you feel like you're in their house, you're hanging out with them. It feels like you're family. And th what you said, the document don't create thing is, it, what I love about that is that for business owners who a lot of them feel like my job is running the business. I don't want to be a marketer. Right. Mm -hmm. The thing is when you, when you kind of like flip the script and just start documenting your day, then it's yeah. not a job. You don't have to be creative. A lot of people don't have that creative marketing brain. Mm -hmm. I, I tell agents this all the time, like just, you are driving anyway, film it. You're walking into this house anyway, film it. You're at a closing anyway, film it. Just create these short little videos. Um, yeah. And yeah, they work. They work as the main character kind of of your video. And then that like B-roll type content works really well right now as well. I bet. Specifically I bet. short little video. Yeah. I, I, and I was going to ask you kind of along that same vein, like what are you seeing the, the, the realtors and just anybody in real estate that is online you know, let's use Instagram as the platform as an example. 
folks that you see all the time posting online, like if you can in your brain say, okay, here's, here are the trends that a lot of them are doing and maybe they're not working with you, Sarah, but like, I can tell you with pretty good certainty, like if I pull up my Instagram today, I, we follow on our, at least on our junk Raider account, uh, because we want to work with realtors, we follow them on Instagram. If I start watching the stories that are at the top from the realtors, they're all going to be kind of similar. You know, there's some that are doing it better than others. Some are better production than others. You know, you've got the guys that are, you know, selling the homes up on Lake Norman and they've got the the drone and the, you know, awesome video, um, awesome music to go along with it. You can tell it's been professionally done. I like those videos. Um, but then you've got the others that are actively posting, but like, I, I tend to skip through a lot of the real estate videos just because they all tend to, to be doing the same stuff. And that's, you know, that's a lot of just like self-promoting of their business. And I'm right. trying to figure out, I, I had a realtor on, you know, two months ago, and I think I asked him a similar question, like, you know, what, what are you doing differently than other realtors to capture maybe somebody like my attention who is a potential home buyer or seller at some point? Because I can tell you what I would like to know. Like, I would like to know, you know, exactly what you just said. How do you make your coffee in the morning when you're at home? Or, you know, yeah. you're, going to, you're going to Walmart to pick up whatever. Cool. I want to see that oddly. I don't necessarily yeah. want to see like you promoting yet your, your latest listing, you know, like it's cool. I'm glad to see that you're doing well and selling a home, but like, I just, I want to know more about your life personally, just like I do reality TV. Like what are some of those trends that you see amongst the real real estate community that you're like, if you could just get your hands on all these realtors and be like, look, let's change strategies and do more of this. What would that be? Okay. So the, the number one thing that drives me nuts is the just listed, just sold post or, you know, with no context other than the details of the house. Right. Because that really is not interesting to sure. It's a little bit of social proof or whatever, but you're really not going to attract anyone with that content. Cause unless they are in the market for a house, just like that, mm -hmm. um, or maybe they live in that neighborhood and they're curious to see what self or they don't care. Right. But you know, I, I tell people, go ahead and talk about your closings, but let's do it um, in a different style. Like instead of saying just close in Mooresville, say, hey, let me tell you a story. Sally and Jen, they really wanted to upsize their home. They just had a baby. They were living in a town home and they were a little nervous about it because they were locked in at 3% interest rate. And now we're up to, you know, seven. But we sat down, we talked, we were able to get them to a new construction community. And guess what? They got $40,000 in incentives. They got their rate brought down to 5.75. And now they have this new construction home. They are plenty of space for their babies. And they were able to hold on to their first one as an investment property. Right. Yeah. So that's like telling a story. And right. it's so much more memorable than just sold in Mooresville. Yeah. Nobody cares. Right. Yeah. But people care about Sam and Luke or whatever their names are, mm -hmm. how sweet, like not only how sweet that now they have a nice big home for their growing family, but also a lot of people are in that mindset now of, oh, God, I'm locked in at, you know, three percent. I'm never leaving. Yeah. And they don't know that most of these builders are giving crazy incentives to start to buy down those rates. Uh, mm -hmm. Sellers are giving. Um, so that's number one, like utilize storytelling not just with their their closings and their listings, but also, like you said, just their day to day. I mean, we experience some crazy stuff, right? So we see crazy stuff every day. So if they would just use more storytelling in their content, I think that would be good. And then number two, yes, it's just showing the day in the life. So I've seen them work really well when they package a closing gift, when they say, prepare this open house with me. Um, when they say, hey, come with me, I'm going to go show houses and they document little things. So I think like just, you know, adding some context to their post beyond the just list and just sold and instead telling the stories of their clients that are closing and not only of their clients, but of their journey in real estate itself. Like, oh, this closing was so exciting for me because I was able to hit a goal for myself. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm thankful to you, you know, just and asking people to come along with them. Those work really well. Another thing I wish more people would do, real estate agents specifically, because you're already doing it, is like, 
I've seen, there's a girl I follow down in Florida. She does a great job with this. She goes, when she goes and shops for her clients' uh, closing gifts, she just puts a little camera in her Target cart mm -hmm. and then goes to the store and shows herself picking stuff out. She shows her packaging it. And sometimes she tells a story like, they said at some point or another that they really like the Miami Dolphins. So I'm going to get them this little thing for the Dolphins. You know, and then yeah. she puts little things into there and takes people on their journey with her. And not only are they seeing the behind the scenes of how she packages this, but they also see kind of the care that goes into it. It humanizes realtors because a lot of times we have a bad rep. Yeah. Um, but it also kind of like just makes them happy for her. And that th those are the feelings I get as just a viewer, like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for her. She's going to yeah. have a closing, excited for her clients to get this basket. I don't even know her. Like, I just know her on Instagram. Yeah. But I'll tell you now, I always associate her now with Fort Myers, Florida, because mm -hmm. she's the girl I follow. She's the one that stands out over there. And I can, I'll just sit there and be, she does a lot of day in the life content too. So I've told people, if you just set an alarm on your phone every hour and take a 10 second clip of, what, of whatever you're doing that day, mm. you can come home that night and grab an Instagram template. I'm sure TikTok has them too. Put them all into a 30 second video, like come with me for a, a Tuesday as a real estate agent. Yeah. People love that stuff. Amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. So all that I wish that they would do better. Writing offers. You know, all the, all the, just the, the real deal, blood, sweat, and tears of real estate that people don't see. Yeah, uh, I, I, I would, I would say too, if you want to post something about real estate or like something professional and not about your life or whatever, like all the stuff that you and I are, are saying to do, if you want to be you know, have a professional post, what I actually like to see from the real estate community because I think it's a hot topic right now is like a, a green screen of a new of, of an article, right? The Fed's just uh, kept interest rates level or they dropped them or they raised them or whatever. And then you're, as a real estate agent, giving your industry knowledge relative to that article. To yes. me, as, the, as, a, as a consumer that I, I don't, I'm not in this world every day, but you are and I respect your opinion on what this new news article just released. Like, what is your opinion on the recent interest rate hikes or right. drops or where do you think housing is going in 2024? Like, I'm actually interested in what your thoughts are, and it's a free and easy way for me to, to consume it if you're willing to put it online, which also builds credibility with you for my future needs as a home buyer or seller that I might remember Sarah and be like, oh, she also sells homes. Like, let me reach out to her when I'm ready. So I think that's a, an interesting one. When, when it comes to like all the other stuff that you're talking about documenting, I, I, I would point people to like Ryan Serhant. And I understand that not everybody, you know, watches million dollar listing or watched it, but like if you did, or if you don't, and you see him now on YouTube, look at his life. Like we're not going to be able to produce the type of video he produces just, you know, right. as we currently sit here today, he's actually built a marketing agency, I think. Yeah. Um, it has a lot of people doing the work for him. So his videos of course are way better, way more, um, you know, put together than what you and I would just be able to create as, as, as we talk about just document or documenting our lives. But if you just look at the topics he covers with his segments, it's a lot of behind the scenes. It's him walking through his office, him going into a, a meeting with his internal teams. It's, you know, him filming himself, getting ready to film an episode of a new book that he's releasing or him walking the streets of New York and be like, Oh, I saw that a uh, penthouse back in 1988. That's That was, that's an interesting story. And it's like, that's what we gravitate towards with Ryan Serhant. It, yes. He's got a nice, you know, on screen appearance and, and candor about him, but it's like, if you just break what his actual content is down, it's behind yeah. the scenes. It's not, yes, we know about the real estate he's selling and the dollar amounts tied to it, but like 90% of his content is behind the scenes. So I, I, I would point people to that and be like, look, he's and the same thing, like I tell agents all the time, follow other influencers in the real estate space, even if they're, they're not Ryan Serhant level. Right. But what's yeah. working for other people? Luckily, you know, I, of course I focus a lot on Instagram, but Go on there and see what are people's top performing videos in the real estate space. I know there's there's also an AI app for TikTok. I, I forgot what it is off the top of my head, but you can go on anyone's TikTok and it'll um, sort their videos by the most views from the most views down. And you can just take those concepts 
and now go ahead and test them with your own content, right? Because they're not you and you're not them, right? So you're going to deliver in a different way, but it takes the guesswork. I, I think where agents get caught up is, or, or business owners in general, but everyone, when it comes to video, is always getting ready to get ready. Yes. So they're, they're saving all the videos and they're, they're screenshotting stuff. And I know, cause I didn't, I've done this myself. And then, you know, the day when they actually jump on there never comes. Mm. And like you said, you can do these behind the scenes. I have a client that we did. She's a new home agent. She felt weird. She, she has a, a thick Hispanic accent. She felt weird about getting on video talking at first. Mm. So I was like, hey, let's just get some video of you walking around the model doing stuff. And then we'll put some facts on screen text. You know what got thousands of views um, was her chopping the you know how girls we like to chop the pillows and make them all oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> her just chopping the pillows in her model home, mm. and it just it was we put good on screen text and good text in the caption. I think people were reading it, but it just looped, yeah. and people just love that stuff. They think it's so interesting that you get to sit in this gorgeous home all day, and so so yeah, just. Start, start somewhere. Yeah, and, um, I love yeah, it. Yeah, look at what people are doing and get inspired. If real estate agents could also talk about the dark side of real estate, like all their their crap stories, like the stuff that they had to deal with that they absolutely hated, a ridiculous right. request from a buyer or seller, like take us on that journey too. Like one day you had yes. to go like unclog a toilet or something, or yeah, what you had to go up in the attic and pull There's out so the mess. You know, like any yes. of that stuff would be amazing to see. Or also, I tell them too, like, hey, it, unfortunately, a lot of real estate agents have like this snake oil salesman type uh, like vibe. Like people just have this thought of real estate agents like we're scammers, mm -hmm. right? And that's because, and it's funny it, now because I watch a lot of real estate content is one thing that drives me crazy is it's always a good time to buy. Oh, according to, to real estate agents. And in real life, that's not true. It, and it's definitely not true for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. I think every market offers an opportunity, right? Yeah. But when you constantly are giving only the positive side of the news, you don't come across as very trustworthy because, right. you know, there's not, you can build a silver lining and everything, but there are markets where it's very tough for people, right? So, um, like when I, one of the things that agents are afraid of, right, is talking about for sale by owner. And if they're talking about them, they're talking about them and you're, you're a loser. You don't know anything. But when you use search data to kind of um, feed into your strategy, which is really important, right? Because you're, you know, gives you the answers before you look for them, right? So mm -hmm. out of, uh, when you, when you, look up how people are searching for selling their home in Charlotte. Three out of the top five searchers are some variation of selling it without a realtor, right? Mm -hmm. Selling in my own house. And I always tell agents, if you can come up on video and you can say, hey, here are the pros and cons of buying a realtor. I know you want to save 6%. Uh, you know, $50,000 is a lot of money to me too. So makes sense, right? And you validate their feelings, but then you tell them the other side, hey, you're probably going to pay a buyer's agent. So now we're cutting it out, you know, and you just list all those things and let them make the choice. You will build trust because there's honesty mm -hmm. and, and they're going to say, Oh, she's, she's at least willing to give me both options. Yeah. And that goes, that goes a long way. And yeah. so all those things we talked about, like those behind the scenes, that's all entertainment, right? And entertainment always attracts. Mm -hmm. But like you said, those educational ones or being honest or telling them about what the market's doing, that's education and that is what converts in my opinion. Yeah. So not both, to go down a hole with, Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say not to go down a rabbit hole about for sale by owner but hopefully folks are listening to this cuz that's such a great yeah. nugget. Um it, I I just did an episode with my business partner before this one. Um and the topic was you know thoughts on starting a business just independently on your own versus buying into a franchise system. Obviously we're biased cuz we're we're offering franchises. But the, the conversation typically turns to cost, right? Why, why would I pay you if I can go do this on my own? Um, very similar to for sale by owner. If a, real, if a realtor could come to on screen, it doesn't have to be long, 30 seconds, 60 second clip. Yeah, and sure. you're, you're, you're obviously biased because you're a, a realtor, but you don't have to come off that way, but just give some facts. And, and what I always like to, I, what I've been promoting in my, a lot of my videos the last six to 12 months is just self-awareness of what your time is worth. 
But if I'm a guy that's getting ready to sell my home and I'm considering doing it for sale by owner, and I'm seeing you talk about all of the ins and outs, like I already know this as, yeah. me personally, but like if somebody doesn't, and you're talking about all the ins and outs that, that you have to go through to actually sell a home, the, the paperwork, how you prep a home, how you got to get out of a home when somebody wants to see it, how do you yeah. orchestrate the times? Like, dude, it's a headache. Um, and if you could talk about what your time is worth, is your time worth 25 bucks an hour, hundred dollars an hour, $200 an hour? Are you a lawyer? Is it worth $400 an hour? You want to spend all of this time listing your home? I don't think so. It's all, it makes all the sense in the world to pay 3% to a, a, a seller agent right. yeah. to help you through that process. Like, and I'm not trying to sit here trying to advocate for, for realtors, but no, like yeah, when it you makes, start to break it down, it makes complete sense. Data. It makes yeah. sense. A lot of people just think, and I'm sure it's similar to starting business. Well, why would I spend a hundred thousand? You know, I'm just pulling a number out. Why yeah. do I spend a hundred thousand? But if you think about the time and the cost it takes to start a business, figure out the marketing, figuring out your customer base, putting these systems in place, mm. most times it's going to take you a lot longer, right? Yeah. So if you just right. make a hundred thousand much faster, yep. I'm very much a time is money type. Person. I am as well. I am as <laughs> so, well. Well, yeah. Sarah, we'll wrap it up. I know on the last one, uh, on the one we did with you, you like to do the rapid fire stuff, but I won't, I won't steal that from you. Um, I already know that you love coffee, which is amazing. Uh, we like to end these episodes with, if you could go back to your younger self, if that's a year ago, five, 20 years ago, and, and tell your younger self just a piece of advice, like, hey, this will help you based on what you're doing today. What would that be for you? Oh, gosh. Mine would be just... Don't be afraid to live. I think I lived a good portion of my 20s and probably my 30s, like very careful and yeah. not taking risks. Um, and I wish now that I had taken a lot more. Yeah. You know, because now yeah. I'm like, well, I don't care. Let's just throw a question to the wind. But <laughs> my son is 18 and he's like about to go off to college in the fall. He's all nervous. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, you are going to have the time of your life. Yes, mm -hmm. you're going to leave home behind, but you only get one life. You know, right. go up and live it. So, yeah, I wish I be I had a little bit more of that in me when I was younger. Take I'm with else. you. I'll take yeah. that one as well. Well, Sarah, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. If you want folks to find you, where can, where can they reach out to you? Uh, probably the best place is on Instagram. You can find me at the lead suite, S U I T E. That's probably the best place to find me. Um, yeah. And then all my contact information will be there. Okay, perfect. We'll, we'll link it. We appreciate it. Um, we'll continue to follow you online and hopefully you do us as well. And we'll make you proud with the, with the content we put out. Yes, thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much. much. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>